The unknown mysteries that remain in our world and the discoveries that we have yet to uncover are the primary drives behind scientific expeditions and trials. It costs millions upon millions to operate a scientific voyage into the depths of the ocean. Send a satellite or spacecraft into orbit to observe the Milky Way or develop a computer program that can predict theoretical elements of nature. And yet, we continue to do it because of the chance for massive rewards in the form of scientific knowledge and a greater understanding of the world in which we live. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be looking at three examples of recent discoveries and what they mean for the scientific community. Methane Plume on Saturn's Moon one question that has plagued scientists and thinkers since virtually the beginning of time is whether we are alone in the universe or if there are other life forms somewhere out there in space. Although there are often small clues that are uncovered that seem to indicate the possibility of alien life, we have yet to confirm whether such an exciting possibility exists. The newest piece of this mysterious puzzle was discovered on Enceladus, one of Saturn's moons. In 2005, one of NASA's Saturn orbiters captured footage in which scientists noticed that there were geysers blasting particles of water into space. The surface of Enceladus is covered with an icy shell filled with various fractures stretching across it, and it was from one of these fractures that the geyser was erupting. It is thought that there is a liquid ocean beneath the icy surface of Enceladus, but the interesting element of this geyser was the fact that it was not just spewing water into space. Further study of the plume revealed that it also contained several other compounds including dihydrogen and the organic carbon compounds methane and carbon dioxide. The creation of these two elements indicates that there could be chemical reactions occurring on the floor of the ocean that are very similar to those that originally sparked life on our very own planet Earth. Interestingly, on Earth, some species of microbes undergo a process called methanogenesis, in which they produce methane from carbon dioxide. Dihydrogen fuels this process, so it does seem as though all of the building blocks for microorganisms are present on Enceladus. The plumes on Saturn's moon also contained a rather large amount of methane, which could be explained as the result of methanogenic organisms producing it as a byproduct, but scientists wanted to be sure. So, they designed a model to determine the likelihood that the large amount of methane on Enceladus was in fact produced biologically and whether or not the number of microbes needed to produce that amount of methane could be supported by eating the dihydrogen also found in the plume. Amazingly, through several diverse iterations of the study, the scientists were able to provide evidence that the chemistry of the hydrothermal vents observed through the plume is highly unlikely to have occurred without the aid of living organisms. Furthermore, if you put microbes undergoing methanogenesis into the equation, the concentration of available methane fits perfectly. However, this mathematical study simply evaluates the probability and likelihood that microorganisms might exist within the bounds of the chemical reactions that we can observe here on Earth. So unfortunately, it cannot be taken as confirmation that there could be life outside of our own planet. It is entirely possible that the concentration of methane is simply produced through reactions involving abiotic matter that is not known about on Earth. And as Enceladus is believed to have been formed from organic matter created by comets, this theory is also entirely possible and valid. Essentially, this study is not attempting to prove that there are microorganisms living outside of Earth, it is simply introducing that idea into the realm of possibility. Needless to say, researchers are continuing to look into these mysterious Enceladus plumes in the hopes that the possibility of life outside Earth continues to grow. New Methods for Predicting Solar Storms An element of weather that you might not even be aware of actually affects life on Earth much more than people realize. Solar flares are high-energy radiation that erupts from the Sun's surface, resulting in space weather that affects satellites orbiting Earth and can even short out electrical power grids. One of the largest solar flares occurred in 1859, decades before there were satellites or electrical grids to affect 
but another similarly large explosion could be catastrophic for us now in the 21st century. Needless to say, predicting when these flares might occur is vital in order to prevent or minimize these damages. But how would one go about predicting when a gigantic mass of flaming gas is going to erupt into another solar flare? Luckily, scientists have recently developed a new method for predicting these storms, and it seems to be much more accurate than previous methods. After much work with theoretical mathematical models attempting to understand why solar flares happen and exactly what happens as they burst, scientists were finally able to come up with a physical model using NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory, or the SDO. With the data gathered from the SDO, they were able to create a three-dimensional map of the Sun and its relevant magnetic charges. Although the true causes of solar flares are still a mystery, the flares themselves are an explosion of magnetic energy, so scientists figured that mapping the magnetic zones of the Sun would be the first step in predicting when and where the flares would occur. Since magnetic fields cannot be viewed directly, scientists working on the project developed software that can calculate the fields in three dimensions and create a map of the zones. They then look for locations where the magnetic fields reconnect and create instability which could indicate the start of a flare. Kenya Cassano, one of the lead scientists on the project, spoke to Earth Sky about their model, comparing it to detecting where an avalanche will occur by looking at the amount of snow on a mountain and guessing how large of a collapse will result from a crack at any location. As it currently stands, the program takes several hours to make a single prediction, but has still managed to predict seven of the nine most recent solar flares, which were all X-class flares. Additionally, despite only being in the conceptual stages, it correctly estimated the exact location and power of each flare. Although the researchers are hoping to be able to streamline the process in order to quickly provide more accurate predictions, right now the current method is breaking ground as the first reliable method of predicting these huge, potentially damaging solar flares. Eye of Sauron discovered underwater. Sometimes some of the most interesting things are discovered by scientists to have been lurking under our oceans the entire time. In one recent instance, a crew aboard Cyro's research vessel, the RV Investigator, operating a multi-beam sonar, noticed that a strange formation was appearing. The sonar map depicted what turned out to be an ancient volcano resting over 3,000 meters below sea level in the Indian Ocean not far from Christmas Island. The volcano's appearance in the sonar map looked for all the world like the iconic Eye of Sauron from the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and was just as surprising to scientists who had never suspected that such a massive formation could be hidden there. The eye structure and the neighboring seamounts make up a caldera, which is an oval depression in the sea floor caused by the collapse of empty chambers at the base of a volcano. This specific formation consisted of a 6.2 km by 4.8 km caldera extending 300 meters deep, with a relatively new peak rising another 300 meters high from the center of the eye. Amazingly, this unexpected ancient undersea volcano was just the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. Just a short distance away, the seafloor gave way to a second underwater mountain dotted with volcanic cones similar to the one in the middle of the Eye of Sauron, as well as a larger flat seamount. The researchers who discovered them dubbed them barad and ered Lithu, respectively, in keeping with the Lord of the Rings theme. Although these names are all in good fun, they are surprisingly appropriate to the shape and composition of the formations which are part of a seamount cluster that is estimated to be over 100 million years old. Researchers believe that Ered Lithur, once projected from the ocean, albeit during a time so long ago that Antarctica sat next to Australia and the flat top was created by the erosion of waves over time as the seafloor sank down to its current position. Additionally, although Ered Lithu and Barad Dur are likely as old as the surrounding seamounts and are covered with over 100 meters of sand and mud deposited during the intervening years, a caldera that old would have been partially buried by the sediment deposition. Since the Eye of Sauron is still prominent, it's thought that it's a relatively new volcano that has more recently erupted from the sea floor. These structures can help to give scientists and other marine life researchers a better idea of how the Earth's crust formed 
hundreds of millions of years ago, as well as all of the changes that it has undergone since then. Currently, the old sea floor does not look hundreds of millions of years old and is covered in beautiful sea life and corals. But what do you make of these amazing discoveries and what will science find next? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.